Hello and welcome to C++ Weekly. I'm your host, Jason Turner. I'm available for code reviews, contracting, and on-site training. This is my now second episode in my game development series, and episode two to be perfectly correct, and this is the third episode in that regard. Um, and in this episode, I want to address some of the things that happened in the previous episode, and that was namely accessing these state variables when they were not initialized, and then having a question about whether or not um, we can pass a null pointer here to this checkbox, which arguably it never made sense for us to pass a null pointer there, but these were questions that we had. Now, the first thing that we would really like to see is if it's possible to actually get some sort of a, a warning from our compiler here that we are using this value uninitialized. So I'm going to go into my CMake settings here, and I was able to zoom the fonts in my CLion IDE. Hopefully they are acceptable for you, uh, those of you who are watching this at home. And I went into my CMake settings here, and I enabled these things that we talked about in episode uh, negative one of the game development series, the one about the ultimate C++ CMake starter project. And I did this, I enabled address sanitizer bool equals true, enable CPP check bool equals true. So I'm going to be running with CPP check on every single build and with address sanitizer. I'm also going to turn on the undefined behavior sanitizer. Now, some of these will slow down our actual executable, uh, but I think since we're running in debug build right now with no performance concerns because we're not really doing anything yet, this isn't going to be a problem. What we would like to do is try to leave these address sanitizer and undefined behavior sanitizers enabled all the time and CPP check. So our sanitizers are going to give us runtime checks and CPP check is going to give us a static analysis tech. Now, CLion also has built-in support for Cling Tidy, and it can use either a built-in one that it provides for you, or it can use the external one that you provide. So I can use the one that I'm providing. And it will automatically run these Cling Tidy checks whenever we're, you know, just navigating through the code and everything. And you can see it is enabled here. Um, I'm going to uncheck this button so that I am by default using the cling tidy file that I have provided. I made a point of providing one for my project. So now I have cling tidy running in the background, CPP check running on every build, and address sanitizer and undefined behavior sanitizer. So let's go ahead and let it reload the configuration here. And you can see I got two warnings. CMake C compiler is unused and enable sanitizer undefined is unused. So it would seem that um, I did not give this the correct compiler flag, CMake configuration flag. Uh, that's right, because it is the name is undefined behavior sanitizer. There we go. So again, it's automatically reloading the changes that we made here and automatically did the reconfigure. Now I'm going to go ahead and compile again. And what you're going to notice, unfortunately, is I'm still not getting any warnings with this code. And this is kind of uh, the fault of the API. So we're getting this warning, Clang tidy uninitialized record type event right here. We can default initialize that. But this bool, which is undefined right now, we don't know if it's true or false, is being passed in here. Now the problem is, because this API expects a pointer, 
uh, our static analysis tools don't know if it's what what's happening in there. They're probably assuming that the pointer is going to be populated with something or something along those lines. And so we're not actually modifying or observing the state of this variable at any point. We're only looking at the address of it. So unfortunately, our tools just can't help us right now unless we were to compile MGUI with the static analysis and everything else enabled, then we might see some of this. So we don't see that. Now, address sanitizer can find some uses of uninitialized memory. Memory sanitizer is better at that. Let's just go ahead and run this right now in its debug build state. And we get no warnings or any problems from the compiler. So that's unfortunate. It's not something that we can address at the moment. It's, it's an error that we can't find, but we do want to find as many errors as possible. So I'll show you with the tools that we have enabled so far, and this actually gets a little tricky. If I make this null pointer and try to compile again, I'm going to get this unused variable state and then I'm going to get state is unused and I have enabled unused variable warning and warnings as errors, which is good because this, you know, tells us that perhaps we're not doing what we intended to do with our code. So we'll comment that out and recompile. And now we are passing null pointer to this function and we'll see what happens there. Uh, address sanitizer, deadly signal. That sounds pretty bad, right? in here where we just built and we're going to go ahead and run it this way and see if we can actually see what this error was. So we ran it with the built-in terminal here and we're getting a hint address points to the zero page. A seg V has happened in an unknown address zero and it all was kicked off from line 86 of main. This all sounds like very good information. Let's go to line 86. Hey, wait a minute. I passed an all pointer there and I shouldn't have. Okay. So that's good. So we're going to try to leave this enabled as long as possible. And unfortunately, we can't get any diagnostics on this not being enabled. But we can go ahead and, uh, or diagnostics on this being initialized, that is. So we can just go ahead and initialize it, um, fortunately. Now, that takes us to here. Now, another great part about using this IDE is that I get this error that I am passing something of type bool to something expecting a pointer to type bool. And there's, well, that's not the most helpful. I don't want to cast that to a bool. That's a pointer to bool for sure. Okay, so that actually now our plan is a little off kilter here, isn't it? So episode two actually became finding errors as soon as possible. So by enabling all these tools, we're gonna try to catch as many things as possible as soon as possible. And that is in fact why we enabled these things like we did. Um, and on all of the work that we did in setting up our project with CMake. Now, I need to set up some sort of way of auto incrementing these, but let's just go ahead fix this. I know that episode three now is going to actually become handling command line parameters. We're going to work on that in a moment. And then all of this just gets way out of hand. So let's try to do a little bit of refactoring while we're in here, because as soon as we see that we're doing this copy and paste and we're, um, finding ourselves creating more and more variables and doing a bunch of things by hand, then clearly it's time to do something smarter. And am I doing something smarter yet? No, not really. So how do we want to handle this smarter? We know that the, this is now the set of things that we are doing. So let's go ahead and take this set of things.
Hmm, perhaps I should set my max line length to something different. Because that's 370 something. Okay, we'll deal with that later. Um, but yeah, here we go. So we have created an array of all the possible states. It is array of 12 at the moment. I'm getting a warning saying that this is a magic number. We'll deal with the magic numbers later. Um, there's uh, probably several different ways I could have done this, but at least we're on the path to no longer repeating ourselves. We stopped going down the road of copying and pasting code. And we have a list of all of the action items that we're going to do. And we should be able to run this project now. And now it's not possible for us to accidentally pass a null pointer. It is not possible for us to, um, ah, that's a problem. Um, it's not possible for us to make a copy and paste error, but it is possible for us to forget to increment the index that we want to save the state in. Now, the problem that we do have at the moment is we could index past the end of this, but at the moment here we've got the plan, getting started, finding errors as soon as possible. That is where we are. We're gonna talk about handling command line parameters in episode three. And perhaps in a later refactor, we will clean this up so that we tie the state to the description and to make this all a little bit better than it is currently, but at least we are auto-generating these checkboxes. Uh, so thanks for watching this episode of C++ Weekly. Be sure to use the tools that you have available.